one of my favorite chores at this time of year has to be compost moving. And we've been composting here at the Hort Society all winter long. And here are some of the fruits of our labors. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And today's job, and one of the things that I really like to talk about is moving compost from the compost bin into our raised vegetable garden so that we can actually seed it today. So one of the first steps is getting the compost from the bin into the raised vegetable garden. And what we are doing here is because of the narrowness of the space and we're really not traveling far, we are using a pail and we're using a shovel and we're just gonna take it and place it over into the vegetable garden and spread it as we go. Great compost, it's looking good. And Tom's just gonna put it all through the bed. What we're trying for, all what we're trying for here is to try and get it nice and evenly spread. So even amounts and then using your hands, wear gloves and spread them out and get it nice and even and pretty quick here. We're gonna have a bed all set for the seeds we're gonna do later on. So here we go, we're adding more and you'll notice that Tom is trying to keep the irrigation lines a little bit clear so that when we go to water, we're not getting them in the way. But we're getting there. Look, at we've taken two buckets out and we're a quarter of the way down the bin. And then the next, as I say, the next phase is getting it going. But look at that beautiful product that we've produced just from our own kitchen waste and our own things that we bring and throw in the garden. So Tom is just hand troweling the compost into the top level of the existing garden soil just to enrich it because what we want is a really rich seed bed and this is a crucial part of the operation. Our bed is composted and now the exciting part. We've got spinach, arugula, and some really interesting Chinese greens and pak choy. I'm really quite excited to see these. These are what the garden gardeners here at the Hort office call our fast growing crops. And what we are doing is we're lining them up to do partial planting. We are going to label. And what you will find with these labels is we use a pencil to write on them because it lasts longer than the felt pens and it's a lot more permanent writing. One of the things about this pro these particular seeds is that they all germinate really well in cool weather and that's what makes them really valuable in this cropping. And the succession planting is going to prove to be very valuable as you go to harvest it. That little section right there will feed a family of three with spinach and the lettuce and the cabbages, etc. And you'll be surprised what yield you get out of it. is just gently covering the seeds so that they get a certain amount of cover. They don't want to be buried so deeply that they won't grow up and through the soil. So we're using garden inoculant because we are going to plant peas and peas need that extra little help and what peas are is a natural nitrogen producer in their root system. So this product, this inoculant, produces this lovely black rhizobium, which is a naturally occurring soil bacteria, and it helps the peas roots to release the nitrogen into the soil, which makes them a really valuable crop to rotate through your garden. This, we're adding enough to coat the seeds, and that's really what we're trying to do, is just get enough in there, and sometimes I throw a little into the soil as well. So something that I like, and Tom does it too, is you just poke individual holes for your peas. And I like to go down about an inch, Tom's going down about an inch, and we're poking them in. And to me, that's a more efficient way to use peas and get them in. They like to germinate in this cool weather, and they put down a nice deep root. And by putting them in a bit deeper, you get a much stronger stem, and they don't come out when the birds are so hungry for green.
winter rye or fall rye, I've been corrected. We decided last year that this bed needed rejuvenation. So last September, mid-September, the guys planted all of this and they planted it in, into this bed to rejuvenate it. The other thing that I like about rye is that it is aliopathic, which just means that weeds won't grow in here. So all that you're seeing here is the rye and it should be turned into the garden and it will gradually break down and it will help to further enrich the bed and we didn't lose any soil cover with it. And we're going to dig over the rye, turn it in, and it rots down and really improves the soil texture in about a month, month and a half period. It's very quick to rot down. The one thing you never want to let it do is self-seed. It gets woody and it doesn't rot down. So if you let it grow too long in the spring, it's a mistake. This is about the stage where you want to dig it in. So what is bugging you? Right now it's probably aphids or something like it. When I look at this curled up leaf that you first saw, I'm seeing curled up leaf going to be a detective. I am then going to look at and unroll the leaves. And of course I am going to find aphids. Now the other thing you've got to be aware of, and I hear this all the time, is these aren't aphids, they're a different color. But you know what? Aphids come in red green and I've seen them well we see them black quite often on some of your vegetables um, some trees get a peach aphid which is almost a peachy color and you think oh my goodness so aphids come in many colors so let's talk aphid control pretty quick here and we will talk about it then the other part of the detective work that you're going to do in June is be aware of what you're looking at and I go out and walk around in my garden at least every other day maybe sometimes every day and one of the things you should be looking for and looking at are your junipers this has been a particularly wet and cool year so these orange blobs that you're looking at these are telial galls and they are literally yucky looking they're kind of slimy if you can get them at this stage that's when i try to get them out of there prune them out and then the next stage you will see if they've already matured is that brown hard ball and that brown hard ball the more you prune it out the less likely you're going to have to die back on your junipers but again it's called a telial gall but the thing is it doesn't stop and end at your junipers this is what puts rust on the saskatoons this is what puts rust on your crab apple and apple trees and it does every once in a while not every once in a while the toba hawthorn is completely susceptible to this so do look for some of these signs